to tell you that scanning it will probably not help you with, with. Well, you can always get kind to do the scanning and you just ask them questions. While he's saying? Yeah. You, you know what the question you're working on, Ken? No. You, are you willing to scan it and, and I'll ask you any question that I might be unable to answer myself? He doesn't look terrifically well. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Or he may be willing to feel unable. <laughs> sure, just show him where to start scanning. He'll do it. What page are you on? Uh, 2377. Mm -hmm. It's low text. Otherwise, 248D. last time was that we were comparing <coughs> these two sections, 238C and 248B, mm -hmm. and we said that the section of 248B presents the present on to the future, the other section leads up to the, to the present. And therefore, we to drop out that we drop out as all considerations for the future based upon the description of the uh, uh, magnificence of the present. And therefore, it wouldn't be a whole. To play it on another level, <coughs> let's divide up. Let's divide up the, the group. Right? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, and David six. Right? You guys become, you represent, whenever there's anything mentioned about children, that'll be your primary perception, right? You will try to represent that as best you can, right? The middle group, right? <coughs> uh, fathers. This group, mother. Well, uh, of the of the dead. <coughs> so the dead are in the middle. Right. Now I see. So you're the children of the dead. It was your father. Right. You guys are the mothers of the the phone. And let's see what it would be like if you were there and assuming the speech is in the highest sense true. Right. Okay. Just read it to me. Perfect. From 240? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> you have to picture it in your mind as you're reading. Go ahead. Let this then 
suffice as our message to our kinsfolk. To the city, we would add an exhortation that on our behalf, they care for our parents and our sons, bestowing on the latter an orderly training, and on the former, the fitting nurture of old age. And as it is, we are well assured that even without our exhortation, the city will bestow upon them ample care. Such is the message, O ye children and parents of the fallen, which they enjoined upon us to deliver, and which I, with all the earnestness in my power, have now delivered. And I myself, on their behalf, entreat the children to imitate their fathers, and the parents to have no fear for themselves seeing that we, both privately and publicly, will give nurture to your age and bestow care upon you, wheresoever one of us meets with one of you. And as regards the care bestowed by the city, of your own, of your own selves ye know well that she has made laws regarding both the children and the begetters of those who have fallen in the war to ensure their care and that the highest authority in the land, in the state is instructed to watch over them beyond all other citizens, that the fathers and mothers of these men may suffer no wrong. And the city her health, herself helps in the bringing up of their children, endeavoring to render them as little conscious as possible of their orphaned condition. While they are yet children, she stands toward them as a father, and when they arrive at man's estate, she presents them with full military equipment and sends them back to their own place, thereby exhibiting and putting them in mind of their father's profession by bestowing on each of them the instruments of his father's prowess, while at the same time desiring that he should be auspiciously equipped with arms on commencing his journey to his ancestral heart there to rule with power. Nor does the city ever omit to pay honor to the dead heroes themselves, seeing that she herself year by year performs publicly on behalf of all those customary rites which are privately performed for each. And moreover, she institutes contests in athletic and horse racing and music of every kind. And thus, in simple fact, she stands towards the fallen in the position of son and heir, towards the sons in that of father, and towards the parents of the dead in that of the guardian, thus exercising, exercising towards all, all manner of care throughout all time, laying which to heart it behooves you to bear your sorrow with the greater calm. For thus will ye best content both the dead and the living, and tend and be tended with the greatest ease. And now that ye and all the rest have already made public lamentation for the dead, as the law ordains, go ye your way. There, Menexinus, you have the oration of Aspasia the Milesian. Okay. All right. So, how do you guys feel now as children? Like a city. Hmm? Like I'm being taken care of. Feeling relaxed, orderly up to me. I don't feel like an orphan. Mm -hmm. The fathers, the mothers. Feel like life is over. In, a, in private and public encounters, feeling like your life is over. Well, it's just the, what's your purpose in life? Just to be cherished. So your your models. I don't think. Hmm. Keep, come on. What happens to the parents? Nurture, taken care of. Nurture, taken care of. Mm -hmm. What else? Publicly and privately greeted with respect and care. Okay. Uh, oh, let's see. Not that. Okay. Watched over by the city. All right. And would you not agree, uh, Selena, that we have to give grades occasionally? Ah! Huh? No.
Yeah, that's there. Okay, check that. Father and mother too. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Okay, then we can skip, go to the next section. Why would we want to skip? Because we got a D. Oh, well. I'm looking, I'm looking. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. The highest is the law you look at for me. I have a personal guardian. That's true. Probably and private. Mm-hmm. I'll be mm-hmm. sure it's the mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Presented with Dude. military equipment. That's true. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that's that there. Oh, you're too old for, old for it. I'm too old for it. I'm a mother. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is just another example. It's that occasionally in Plato you find things that don't have any relationship <coughs> to philosophy, and this is one of the finest examples. It's basically a dull work and has very little philosophical merit to it. Well, there's a lot of virtue in it. The city or the state taking care of people. Oh, well, hey, that's not a bad question. Let me put it this way. Mm-hmm. It's a social law. <laughs> Well, the children are being treated to imitate their fathers. Uh huh, that's true. Just a good social security system. That's true. It talks about consciousness. Desiring that he should be auspiciously equipped with arms on commencing yeah. his journey to okay. I'll, uh, hmm. I'll give uh, arms. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't want to lose that point. Remember that point you making, Barbara? Whether, whether there is. Any place you can sneak anything of philosophical significance out of this section. How foolish, you know, some of us are pl- claiming certain value to that last section. Uh, look, if it's this opaque, I know it's there somewhere. <laughs> it's, my, it's my standard. If I'm, if, if I'm this blind to something, it's, it it's, must be there. <laughs> it's <laughs> my standard. <laughs> I've never known it to fail. I don't know, you know. I ought to be sure and start reading it carefully before I open my big mouth. I'm sure you have. I'm sure you have. Um, let me put it another one. All right, quick, quick, quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, what ensures? What will ensure their virtue or their excellence? What's state? doing it? The state. Right. Right. The state. The way they relate with each other. The right. institutes. Five. Okay. There are two, two forces in the, in the state that are going to ensure the virtue, and that's the heart of the philosophical aspect. The of highest the part? Was that the highest part? It's not just the state. Right. The state, as you pointed out, is kind of social security. Law. Oh, and the laws. Okay, check that. That's why I get D. Got a D for that. <laughs> the laws in the city. I put those two together. Is there anything else that functions? 
Hey, it's, ha, I forgot. Look here, it's right on the board. <laughs> Isn't that curious? What is it? Socrates. Oh, you guys didn't recognize him. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. We, he didn't have wings like the gadfly. Right. Yeah. Okay, let's read it again. <laughs> okay, do it again first. No more than three minutes reading the first. Go ahead. Three minutes reading? Yeah. At this time. Let let this then. Does that mean you want me to read it quickly or not, just not completely? <laughs> let this then suffice that I must turn him into the video or not. Suffice as our message. Let this then suffice as our message to our kinsfolk. Why appear the one? You sound like you can do No? No, we could do it. To the city we would add an exhortation that on our behalf they care for our parents and our sons bestowing on the latter an orderly training, mm. and on the former the fitting nurture of old age. Mm. And as it is, we are well assured that even without our exhortation, the city will bestow upon them ample care. Sure, they do it anyhow, but go ahead. Such is the message, O ye children and parents of the fallen, which they joined upon us to deliver, and which I, with all the earnestness in my no, power... Excuse me, will you read that part again? And which... Such is the message, O ye children and parents of the fallen, which they enjoined upon us to deliver, and which I... Oh, what? Who's the, who was that then? Socrates. Oh, I see. Go ahead. No, that isn't Socrates. Isn't it? Aspasia? Yeah. Isn't well, it depends on if you think you really want to speak like that. Whoever it's going to... It's an I, right? Socrates is saying it. Or Aspasia. Okay, whoever you're going to put in there. I. I'm curiously enough put in Socrates. Go ahead. With all the earnestness in my power. In my power. Mm -hmm. Wow. What's he going to do again today? Again? What's he going to do? He's going to deliver this message. Yeah. With all the earnestness in his power. Prosthumatized. The one from Dunamai. the dead. Hmm? This is a message from the dead. Yes. This is a message. Which they enjoined upon us to deliver, and which I, with all the earnestness in my power, have now delivered. Right. And I myself. Ah, and I myself. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. On their behalf. On their behalf, on the behalf of the dead. Entreat the children to imitate their fathers. One. And the parents to have no fear for themselves. Come on, go seeing that we, both privately and publicly, will give nurture to your age and bestow care upon you, wheresoever one of us meets with one of you. What is that? means every time they meet up with the person. What will they do? They will uh, have care upon them, hit with for them, and give nurture to them. Hmm. Well, what is that? And what help them in the future. What would he be doing? Isn't that a great Socratic line? From the Apology and other places? Yeah, every time. How do you see the whenever, whenever I meet any one mm. of you, mm. I only have questions about your nurture and your virtue, your care, you know that? Huh. It's my only concern as I go through the city. Is that, is that, is that, is that? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Because that's what he's doing. That's a break, isn't it? Then he returns to the city in this passage. Mm -hmm. He drops it off, puts himself in, then he returns to the discussion. Mm -hmm. So, repeat it again, okay, from the... Uh, from I myself? Well, from the beginning, uh, such is the message. Such is the message, O ye children and parents of fallen, fallen, which they enjoined upon us to deliver. Right. Which they enjoyed upon us. us to deliver, right? That's our job, plural. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And which I, with all the earnestness in my power, have now delivered. The end. Code it. Finish. Right? Yeah. Go ahead. And I myself, on their behalf, 
and treat the children to imitate their fathers. Ah! And the parents to have no fear for themselves, seeing that we, both privately and publicly, will give nurture to your age and bestow care upon you wheresoever one of us meets with one of you. Isn't that, doesn't that apply to both of those parts then? Yeah. So then what will he be doing to this group? And this, what will he be doing? He will be um, entreating them to, well, he's doing two things, one to, one to each, but every time he meets with both of them, he will be caring for each, each and every one of them. No, but not just care. What's he going to try to do with them? Nurture them. He nurture them. And get them to imitate their fathers in with respect to excellence. Yeah, right, in respect to excellence. Mm -hmm. If he were to do that, what would he be doing? What's your vision? What, what do you see in what he would be doing? What do you think? Is that philosophy? Mm -hmm. Did he sneak it in there? Mm -hmm. I would say so, because he's going to have to get them to reflect upon themselves, <laughs> to get them to imitate their fathers uh, upon those very acts mm -hmm. he was reflecting upon here. Yeah, and he's going to do it. He's going to do it privately. Mm -hmm. hey, come on, mm -hmm. or he'll do it in public. Mm -hmm. oh, curious guy. What else is it beside the city that ensures the care? The city and what? The city and what? Yeah, there are two things that. Oh, it's not the good thing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> really, I lost sight of it. How I had a question before, and that was that if Socrates was delivering this, if this was his speech, and this was his voice, that it would be different than um, if it was Asia. And at the end, he says, there you have the oration of Aspasia and Alicia. No, I totally agree with you. Now, what do you do with that okay. insert? Huh? Yeah, now, is that an insert? Well, I don't know. How well, do we know that? Yeah, I totally agree with you. Um, it doesn't fit. This doesn't fit. The I myself doesn't fit. She can't be doing it. Well, she's written it for someone to deliver. Is that the right one? No. Yes and no. She did it. She did it for Pericles, didn't she? Yeah. And then she had second thoughts about it. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, actually, that speech has only fragments in it. They were prepared previously. And now I'm giving it a new form and extemporaneously I'm adding some other material there. And Socrates now has to present it. Oh, to an excellent. Is presenting the speech. Yes. Okay. Oh, to an excellent. Yeah. Well, who presented it to Socrates? The He's doing it. See these? Yeah, yeah, okay. Do you see these little boxes in here? Mm -hmm. Those we identified last time as the fragments. Those would be said to be fragments because that's the way Socrates describes the speech through the opinion of a, a Aspasia. And now she's having second thoughts and reflections on it. She's saying uh, it would be better to put it in a new form. I left some things out, and Socrates was around, and she gave it to him. He's giving it to us. An improved version. An improved also, version. you know, Menexus has doubts that Aspasia ever said any of this. In oh yeah, the Ryan. beginning. So the end. You know. Yeah. yeah. As a dramatic device, it seems like that puts in question as to whether this is Socrates' composition. Yeah. Even right. the beginning, beginning yeah. and end, has a, has a. Mm -hmm.
know what that does to the what that what impact that has upon us. Depending on who's speaking. Well, if Menexina kind of raises a playful question that he doubts whether it's Stasia or Stasia or not, he, he likely knows it's Stasia at also. And he knows whether it's likely she could have composed such a piece or not. Or whether Socrates is likely to have been her student and likely to have given it. Oh, I see. I mean, that's okay. Yeah, let's go to page 381. Right. Improved upon it and refreshed it. Yeah. Go. By okay. her account, deserves to be congratulated that she is really capable of composing a speech like that. Yeah. And in the beginning, the introduction to it all. Never mind, I never fear, Socrates. Only tell it, and you will gratify me exceedingly. Whether it is as faces that you wish to deliver or anyone else's only say on. Yeah, so the words that are important. <coughs> so that's coupled with the ending. Why would she be angry? Why would she be angry? Well, she'd probably be angry. She'd probably be angry if she's joking, but I think that is. You know, she'd probably be angry if the thought that Socrates attributed to her a speech he may have generated. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what? But he says she, she's talking. That's still, that's still used today. Uh, there's another kind of fun thing here. Uh, nay now, right, I'm, uh, I like this one on 381. Nay then, if you are incredulous, come along with me and listen to a speech from her own lips. Does he take him up on it? for the oration to her or to him. Mm. Whoever it was that repeated it to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> However you got it, Socrates. <laughs> However you got it. Yeah. Well, in a way, you know, 
They help me give the job to everybody else. Yeah, it's a subtraction problem, isn't it? All right. If you have If you have two things and you want to compare them, right, you're going to go for similarities and differences, aren't you? Just in terms of topics, see whether they're dealing with the same kinds of things. Right? So you'd line them up that way, wouldn't you? Then look at the differences on either side. Then you go for the one that you're dealing with and rank them hierarchically what you think most significant. Say this is Menexenus. Right? Or let's say that there are some passages or some categories that we think important, like the one we just mentioned. Is there a role personally for the orator? Does he take on some personal responsibility in respect to what the oration is? Or we might deem that. All right, well then is there is there a comparable one on the other side? and so on. Right? Mm -hmm. So that all we have to do, would you agree at this point, since we're fresh in our memory about the city under the category of, of future, how it's going to function in the future in respect to the children, the fallen, and the parents. We already have that. It's fresh in our memory. So immediately, what we want to do Go to Pericles, pop to the role for the city in that respect, and see whether there's anything in there. All right, quickly, wouldn't it? Here's what's fresh in your memory. It may be scattered, or is there some area? significant. I guess we want to rank them, don't we? <coughs> Would you not agree empirically if he deals at great length with the role of the city? We can find plenty of form of the government. We can line it up and say, what's the role in each? It's called uh, A, then city. Right? Call it the city. Yeah. But we want the city, city's role for the future, right? Future. B, C, past, present, what? So 
because here we have the and we have and we can also go this way, can't we? Remember the plan that we found in the Nexus? Those are categories readily available. All we then have to do is find a structure for Terraclose's speech. Is there some place within it that he talks about his own structure? Yeah. Yeah, we can there use that. Yeah. Let's jump. Yeah, there is on the book, I think it's about the uh, third or fourth paragraph. Okay. The two categories. First, he's going to uh, praise the city, the spirit, and the strain. And he's going to talk about the community. Yeah. And um, also has principles, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. those who allowed them to praise. <laughs> no, it is that great? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for allowing me to praise. Why don't we look at, uh, why don't we go from 35 to 36 in the text, in the Greek section, uh, 319. Of course, we won't get that section from me there. Well, where does he do his? Well, he lays it out um, up to 37. Where he does his role personally? Let's go 319 to 323 and read it. At least that'll give us a foundation. <coughs> we need to shift gears more over there and over there. Seating as to the sons and brothers, on page 339. And the parents and the children from 337. Aren't the sons the children also? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And those who have survived, he also has a whole set for those who have survived. 335, so we have enough. Mm -hmm. so. I need to add it a little bit, brothers. Those who have survived. So we have enough categories to compare. Mm -hmm. So we need someone who can read straight. Barbara's work like hell. Really? You? Who would you recommend? Very straight. <laughs> Who would you recommend? I would recommend you recommend me some of these. You can see better than I. No, no, I don't even have my glasses. Is there anyone who wants to read? All right. Thank you. What are we looking for? Principles. Go ahead. Most of those who have spoken here in the past have commended the lawgiver who added this oration to our ceremony. The That's nice, isn't it? 
feeling that it is made and right that it should be spoken at their burial over those who have fallen in the war. To me, however, it would have seemed sufficient when men have proved themselves brave by valiant acts, I act only to make manifest the honors we have rendered them. Such honors as today you have witnessed in connection with these funeral ceremonies colonized by the state. And not that the valor of many men should be hazarded on one man to be believed or not according as he spoke well or ill. For it is a hard matter to speak in just measure on an occasion where it is with difficulty that belief in the speaker's accuracy is established. For the hearer who is cognizant of the facts and partial to the dead will perhaps think that scant justice has been done in comparison with his own wishes and his own knowledge. Or he who is not so informed, whenever he hears of an exploit which goes beyond his own capacity, will be led by envy to think there is some exaggeration. And indeed, eulogies of other men are tolerable only insofar as each hearer thinks that he too has the ability to perform any of the exploits of which he hears. But whatever goes beyond that at once excites envy and unbelief. However, since our forefathers approved of this practice as right and proper, I also, rendering obedience to the law, must endeavor to the best of my ability to satisfy the wishes and beliefs of each of you. Now, if you pull out a what is he saying? He's going to give the biggest bunch of bull, all right. Right, he's telling them. What's he doing? Everybody he's has his own... He's going to flatter all of them. He's going to reel out their fantasy. And every, yeah, and everybody has a different idea. I'm going to tell you what you want to hear. Yeah. Even though when I do it, you're going to be envious. Yeah. Because you're going to be And I'm not going to tell you the truth that goes beyond what you're capable of doing. Right. Because I'll end up with disbelief. And you'll be envious. But I have a problem, really, with this really curious second sentence. To me, however, it would have seemed sufficient when men have proved themselves brave by valiant acts, by act only to manifest the honors we render them, such honors as today you've witnessed in connection with these funeral ceremonies, solemnized by the state. Well, is not the end of the that should be. That's all he sees. Right. He thinks that's it's over. Mm -hmm. No need to go on. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Does he mean by, by act only to make manifest the honors of the religion that they should in some way match the actions of these men who died? Well, these now the acts are not. I think that dash there represents an explanation. Yeah, such honors of, as the witness so far. He means putting the posies on the tombstone. Mm -hmm. Or whatever. Or whatever. Yeah. There is a description. They might on. have gained. Whatever or act. Whatever. Right. Isn't there a description on the first page of Thucydides' gifts of the funeral procession and what yeah. took place? Yeah, that was the page that was posted. Yeah. yeah. The you march know. through town. It's not going to be enough. Yeah. Pulling of the caissons and all that. Mm -hmm. So that's an interesting, notice the similarities in the introductions. Well, it's interesting because he says it's easy to, Sox says it's easy to speak in front of uh, people who, who uh, an Athenian speaking in front of Athenians is not going to have any trouble. This guy's saying, oh, but we have to worry about all these guys who are going to be envious and jealous. And he's like, hey, it's a hazard. You're praising people who, in front of the people themselves. Can't leave anybody. So agree with you. No, you're not praising their enemy. That'd be tough. Now he shifts gears in the next part of it. Go ahead. I shall speak first of our ancestors, for it is right and at the same time fitting, and on occasion like this, to give them this place of honor in recalling what they did. For this land of ours, in which the same people have never ceased to dwell, in an unbroken line of success successive generations, they by their valor transmitted to our times a free state. Yeah, that's what, the whole language is different, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. like a different gear. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the style, that may have come from, 
That's right. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> that first part may have been very pleased alone. But watch the way it's called. Nice to all. And not only are they worthy of our praise, but our fathers still more. For they, adding to the inheritance which they received, acquired the empire we now possess, and bequeathed it, not without toil, to us who are alive today. And we ourselves here assembled, who are now for the most part still in the prime of life, have further strengthened the empire in most respects, and have provided our city with all resources, so that it is sufficient for itself, both in peace and in war. The military exploits whereby our several possessions were acquired, whether in any case it were we ourselves or our fathers that valiantly repelled the onset of war, barbarian or Hellenic, I will not recall, for I have no desire to speak. But I shall first set forth by what sort of training we have come from. That's a strategy. Well. But I shall first set forth by what sort of training we have come to our present position, and with what political institutions, and as the result of what manner of life our empire became great, and afterwards proceed to the praise of these men. For I think that on the present occasion such a recital will, not, will be not inappropriate, and that the whole throng, both of citizens and of strangers, may with advantage listen to it. Mm -hmm. Or shall we take the back to but I shall? But I shall. What sort of training? But I shall first set forth by what sort of training we have come to our present position. And with what political institutions. And as the result of what manner of life by the empire became great. After I've done that, I'm going to proceed to the praise of these men. So he jumped the gun, didn't he? Didn't he jump the gun? Oh, yeah, yeah he's, uh, he's yeah. giving his plan after he's already started his plan. Huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I shall speak first of our answer. Yeah, yeah. And where does that fall? Mm -hmm. How our empire became great. Yeah. Got that, do you remember? I understand the principle of his organization is that he can only praise the dead if he can show that it was, they knew what they were sacrificing. It, like it's not courage if it doesn't have mind in it. So he's got to praise the city, their training, and all they had and all they risked first. So he cites that principle and they're further along. Yeah, but at this point. Uh, it's, it's just general. training got us here. <coughs> what political institutions? Right. It's interesting because he doesn't want to speak about things that people know. And he doesn't want to do this. Of what manner of life 
All right, I'm fine for 23. All right, we agree? One, two, three, four. It's going to bring us to the present. So what should be first? Training. Training. All right, next paragraph. I think he interweaves all three of those, okay. the first three, in the first section. But they're not delineated in an ABC order. No, it's not. No, it's, it's like they're all interwoven, those three points. Mm -hmm. But it is one section. Um, let's do it. We live under a form of government which does not emulate the institutions of our neighbors. So he picks up political institutions first. On the contrary, we are ourselves a model which some follow rather than the imitators of other people. It is true that our government is called a democracy because its administration is in the hands not of the few but of the many. Yet while all Yet while, as regards the law, all men are on an equality for the settlement of their private disputes, as regards the value set on them, it is as each man is in any way distinguished. Yet while, as regards the law, all men are on an equality for the settlement of their private disputes, as regards the value set on them, it is as each man is in any way distinguished that he is preferred to public honors, not because he belongs to a particular class, but because of personal merits. Nor again on the ground of poverty is a man barred from a public career by obscurity of rank, if he, has, if he but has it in him to do the state of service. And not only in our public life are we liberal, but also as regards our freedom from suspicion of one another in the pursuits of everyday life. For we do not feel resentment at our neighbor if he does as he likes, nor yet do we put on sour looks which, though harmless, are painful to the whole. But while we thus avoid giving offense in our private intercourse, in our public life, we are restrained from lawlessness chiefly through reverent fear, for we render obedience to those in authority and to the laws, and especially to those laws which are ordained for the succor of the oppressed, and those which, though unwritten, bring upon the transgressor a disgrace which all men recognize. Is something burning? Excuse me. I smell something burning. I lit up a joint a moment ago, but it's out now. I think we're making a statement about the quality of loose grass. Certainly worth checking. Yeah, I mean, if you say something is burning, you know, I mean, that's it. You know. Maybe something is burning. People rushed out to the kitchen there. <laughs> Yeah. What? Do you have anything in your room with electric barber? Uh, it does smell electric. She has oh, that. Oh, I just got right in here. She bought that money maker. A money maker. <laughs> a Xerox it's machine. It's working overtime. It's overheating. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we're running the ceiling. Smoke the ceiling. Yeah. Maybe he's just putting something. Yeah. Come on, girl. I'll just finish the paragraph. Yeah, the only thing in my room was on the 
Moreover, we have provided for the spirit many relaxations from toil. We have games and sacrifices regularly throughout the year, and homes fitted out with good taste and elegance. And the delight we each day find in these things drives away sadness. And our city is so great that all the products of all the earth flow in upon us. And ours is the happy lot to gather in the good fruits of our own soil, with no more home-felt security of enjoyment than we do those of other lands. Okay, what do you just say? Yeah. We have games and sacrifices. We have nice houses. Nice houses. Beverly, we got a Beverly Hills. The the Bible Bible each day and the, the things. Excellent takes the lead even though we have equality. Yeah. Which is the same principle in the Spacey's speech or Sock speech. I don't see any reference to up to uh, virtual out. Uh, it's right after that section on. And section on. Yeah, but we haven't reached it. Yeah, we have. Well, yeah. I, could you read it? Personal merit. Yeah, personal merit. There it is. That each, no matter if the guy is penniless or... Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 personal yeah, merit. Yeah, that's merit, yeah. Yeah, that comes through in yeah. the other translation as uh, excellence or... Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But in this power, really in this paragraph. Uh, it's a style of life, isn't it? A style of life. That made him great. Yeah. And the city is so great, therefore... All the earth floats in upon us. I think that's interesting the way you put that, since the city is great. They read. Does that mean large? Great. No? No. <laughs> Yeah, I so. I read it that way. Well, we agree. It looks like what we have so far is two and three, don't we? Mm -hmm. Political institutions, our manner of life. Mm -hmm. So that the opening of the next paragraph. We are also superior to our opponents in our system of training for warfare. Right. Now we go for. Training, training, education. Training. And this in the following respects. In the first place, we throw our city open to all the world, and we never by exclusion acts, debar anyone from learning or seeing anything which an en enemy might profit by observing if it were not kept from his sight. That's the Russian. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> True Russian spirit. <laughs> Or replace our dependence not so much upon prearranged devices to deceive as upon the courage which springs from our own souls when we are called to action. And again, in the matter of education, whereas they from early childhood, by a laborious discipline, make pursuit of manly courage, we with our unrestricted mode of life are nonetheless ready to meet any equality of hazard. There's the proof. And here's the proof. When the Lacedaemonians invade our territory, they do not come alone but bring all their confederates with them, whereas we, going by ourselves against our neighbor's territory, generally have no difficulty. <coughs> but fighting on foreign soil against men who are defending their own homes and overcoming them in battle, and in fact, our united forces, no enemy has ever yet met, not only because we are constantly attending to the needs of our Navy, but also because on land we send our troops on many enterprises. But if they by chance engage with a division of our forces and defeat a few of us, they boast that they, boast that they have repulsed us all. And if the victory is ours, they claim that they have been beaten by us all. If then, by taking our ease rather than by laborious training, 
and depending on a courage which springs more from manner of life than compulsion of laws, we are ready to meet dangers, the gain is all ours, in that we do not borrow trouble by anticipating miseries which are not yet at hand. And when we come to the test, we show ourselves fully as brave as those who are always toiling. And so our city is worthy of admiration in these respects as well as in others. Okay, what kind of training? What kind of training? What kind of training? Mm -hmm. The training is no training. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, Not laborious training. Does it seem to have any? Ease. We're talking about ease and training. What did he do with it? What did he do? By manner of life. By manner of life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Our training. Right? Mm -hmm. Pardon? Easy, not our manner of life. Not from compulsion of law. Right. Our manner of life. Not forcing anyone. Right. He's got an interesting <coughs> Yeah, but if they don't have laborious training, don't they go out on? Don't they get a lot of experience there? Says they. They make several uh, excursions, right? Oh, they're busy. You're saying, it, isn't it? You're saying it's the courage that springs from their souls rather than any physical training. Yeah, yeah. When they're called to action. Mm -hmm. That's that's not separable from the way they live, which is a kind of education, a kind of a learning. So they, they approach everyday life the same way as they would vow. Well, there should be something in the way, the way of life. Yeah. Yeah, it says right there. Uh, from manner of life than compulsion of law. Mm -hmm. Courage which brings more from manner of life than compulsion of law. On education up on the top of the page. And again, in the matter of education, whereas they, from early childhood by laborious discipline, make pursuit of manly courage, we, with our unrestricted mode of life, are nonetheless ready to meet any equality of hazard. Yeah, any equal situation. Sure. Yeah. So. You can do anything they can do. Yeah, better. <laughs> Now he's got to, now he's got to, uh, he's obliged, isn't he, to make this clear. Mm -hmm. huh? Church. So we are lovers of beauty, yet with no extravagance, and lovers of wisdom, yet without weakness. Wealth we employ rather as an opportunity for action than as a subject for boasting. <clears throat> and with us it is not a shame for a man to acknowledge poverty, but the greater shame is for him not to do his best to avoid it. And you will find united in the same persons an interest at once in private and in public affairs. And in others of us who give attention chiefly to business, you will find no lack of insight into political matters. For we alone regard the man who takes no part in public affairs, not as one who minds his own business, but as good for nothing. And we Athenians decide public questions for ourselves, or at least endeavor to arrive at a sound understanding of them, in the belief that it is not debate that is a hindrance to action, but rather not to be instructed by debate before the time comes for action. For in truth we have this point also of superiority over other men, to be most daring in action, and yet at the same time most given to reflection upon the ventures we mean to undertake. With other men, on the contrary, boldness means ignorance and reflection brings hesitation. And they would rightly be a judge most courageous 
who, realizing most clearly the pains no less than the pleasures involved, do not on that account turn away from danger. Again, in mobility of spirit, we stand in sharp contrast to most men. For it is not by receiving kindness, but by conferring it, that we acquire our friends. Now he who confers the favor is a firmer friend, and that he is disposed by continued goodwill toward the recipient to keep the feeling of obligation alive in him. Huh. <laughs> wow, what? Feeling of obligation. I owe that. Mm -hmm. But he who owes it is more listless in his friendship knowing that when he repays the kindness, it will count, not as a favor bestowed, but as a debt repaid. Yes, and finally, we alone confer our benefits without fear of consequences, not upon a calculation of the advantage we shall gain, but with confidence in the spirit of liberality which actuates us. Is there one more thing? In a word, then, I say that our city as a whole is a school of health, and that, as it seems to me, each individual amongst us could in his own person, with the utmost grace and versatility, prove himself self-sufficient in the most varied forms of activity. Right. So he puts all of that together under that great title. Billy, you had a point one in there. Well, it's that, that idea of French. I mean, if you wanted to compare, I was thinking about the idea of nurturing, you know, friend to friend. And here it's like going around, uh, you know, owing, owing the other person something, and then uh, after, after fulfilling that uh, debt, being able to uh, feel that obligation Lifted, you know, just a different, a whole different attitude. To keep the feeling of obligation alive and happy, that he who owes it is more listless in his friendship, knowing that when he repays the kindness, it will, it will count not as a favor bestowed. As, well, what is it? Yeah, continue that thought to the last. But as a debt repaid. Yeah, keep on. And finally, we alone confer our benefits. Without keep that argument in mind when you read that. Go ahead. And finally, we alone confer our benefits without fear of consequences. Because? Not upon a calculation of the advantage. Because the other party is incurring a debt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But he's saying they're not keeping that in mind. Yeah, that's just a fact. Oh, that you, that you place the obligation on the other person? Mm -hmm. So that's the advantage, is having somebody owe you a favor? Well, the question is whether that's what he means by the nobility of spirit. Mm -hmm. the spirit is it's not by doing it. Not by receiving kindness, but by conferring. I, I don't really know. Doesn't that contradict what he said? That last before? sentence contradicts the whole, yeah, yeah. the whole thing before him. You know, in Aristotle's ethics, he's got a, a view of what's called the magnanimous man. And that's it, right there, it's magnanimous. Oh, the benefit that puts his benefit. Yeah, but but there's a string on it, isn't it? Yeah, a psychic string. The superiority. Over yeah, him. it's like uh, it's like the Godfather or something. Yeah. You know, you owe me one. Is <laughs> nobility of spirit and liberality of spirit in the same thing? I don't understand this liberality, spirit of liberality, which actually does.
You can trust that with his view of the distinctive superiority of other men. And that's that's quite a difference. Yeah, again, a nobility of spirit. Well, the superiority on just ahead of where we were. On yeah. The again, a nobility of spirit. We stand in sharp contrast to those men. For it is not by receiving kindness, but by conferring it, that we acquire our friends. Go back to yeah, the okay. yeah. For in truth we yeah. have this point. Please. Yeah. 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 For in truth we have this point also is superior to be most daring in action, and at the same time most given to reflection upon the venture we mean to undertake. And that fits within a democracy. Hey, we have those two. That's, that's sound, isn't it? That's yeah. a very nice reflection. It fits into what preceded it. And that's certainly different than the sense of the magnanimous man or the nobility of spirit. But in any case, would you agree he wraps it up together as the school of health? Go on, that's good. It's your education. Yeah, in the model, he arrives at his, he calls it a self-sufficiency, which seems different, which is different from that uh, speaker in the first speech, Socrates, who says he will himself take care wherever he meets anyone to um, care for their for their excellence. Like these people seem to be more isolated. Yeah. You know, they're, they're like they have the independence and the responsibility. But they owe each other. They owe each other. I don't think they want to see it. each other. It says you're supposed to continue the kindness, right, so that you can keep the, um, keep the obligation alive in the person that owes you. Yeah. A kind of enslavement. Yeah. <laughs> the one who owes it is more listless than his friendship. Yeah, he doesn't want to, probably doesn't want to <laughs> see you. So you come down the street, he goes the other way. <laughs> yeah, hold this guy. That sure sounds... Well, something. That's not congruous with that in the first part. Yeah. I wonder if Pericles is ad living here. No, I don't. It really fits a, a great view of ethics. Yep. Magnanimous man, a man mm -hmm. who is giving. Um, but, but, but he but gives with a philanthropist. Yeah, but doesn't he have an expectation okay. of something in return? It's mm -hmm. just the nature of things. That's why he is. He knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. He knows what he's doing, but he knows he's conferring benefits. And he knows that <coughs> conferring those kinds of benefits, that the recipient is going to feel a sense of the debt. And that's the nature of benefits. So that, but that's right. You're kind of Socrates, if you were, he's really concerned for the souls. Yeah, okay. yeah, certainly it's different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. <laughs> it's just the, the, the next myth. Such a subtle balance is that one of the things is really like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that last sentence he still says, you know, not upon a calculation of the advantage we shall gain. But with confidence and spirit of liberality, which actually yeah. So he's saying right there that it's an unegoistic action, right? That's the nature of things. So the the magnanimous man can do it. And it does have this effect. Well, that's just the way things are. Somebody else you know? I mean, that's the way things are. Yeah. He's saying that's the way things are. That's and if you're is. a midwife, you're likely to see listless people <laughs> in your relationship with them. <laughs> well, but if you're a pregnant party and you're healthy, you, you certainly might Well, I know I've been listless in my midwife class yeah. on occasion. 
think yeah, then this is a positive. Is this a positive look at that? No, I, I, don't, I don't know whether it's positive. I think it's just accurate. Yeah. But, but you're not calling, this, the magnanimous man is not calling in his markers, so to speak. That's right. He's saying this is, this is what happens. But I mean, he doesn't necessarily say at, a, at another time, say, hey, remember the time I helped you? Now it's time to help me. No, he, he doesn't, doesn't do help. that. No, he's saying the obligation of affirming things, isn't he? Because when you're together, your friendship is weak. Weaker. Yeah. Then he's actually the opportunity to be firm friend. Yeah. Saying that's what we are. As a group of us, that's what we are. As Athenians, that's what we are. Yeah, because we're generous. Our whole city is open. Therefore, people who come to us feel a sense of debt. We don't. We're leaving it open. Yeah, we're givers, not takers. We're givers. So that's just the way you think are. I, I, I don't see Pericles here offering that as a prescription. That's a reality. This is our society, it's open, people can participate on various levels. We're giving all the time. By the way, you know what that does to foreigners that come into town? Well, that's the way things are. Gives them a, a feeling of obligation. Yeah. Or listlessness, and they feel a little... Yeah. So it's not as negative as I intended it. But well, the reality may be negative, <laughs> but it's big but he's, you admit, though. Yeah, but he's not prescribing it. Well, I think. Are you saying that's the way it is, not the way... This is like the result of being generous is a listlessness and a feeling of obligation on the other person's part. Well, I think what preceded it is a whole discussion of the their way of life in their city. Well, that's where they are. The, 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 uh, the, the only problem, you know, philosophically in terms of some kind of ethics would be that um, that's, it's not anything you have to strive for. Oh, it's kind of right. a noble. It's nothing you have to. Yeah, you know, it's nothing you have to strive for. If that, that's something we're Is it a noble one-upsmanship or something? Yeah, like that? and your city happens to have this richness, and you, you can just participate it on various <laughs> levels. Yeah, you're John Paul Getty, and go drop it. It's not like they're really sacrificing a lot, though. Is yeah, it's not a. Yeah, okay. That's right. Or a lot of labor or work. We gain, therefore, a nobility of spirit because we are part of the School of Athens, the School of Hellas. I, I think that's the point he's making. Why don't you pick up from what we left off in, um, in a word, then? Watch the way he talks about it. He's pulling it all together. In the word, then, I said our city as a whole is the School of Hellas. And that is, it seems to me, each individual amongst us in its own person, with the utmost grace and versatility, prove himself self-sufficient in the most varied forms of activity. And that this is no mere boast inspired by the occasion, but actual truth is attested by the very power of our city, a power which we have acquired in consequence of these qualities. For Athens alone among her contemporaries when put to the test, is superior to the report of her, and she alone neither affords to the enemy who comes against her cause for irritation at the... Yeah, that's a hell of a yeah. I'm glad you're reading. For Athens alone among her contemporaries, when put to the test, is superior to the report of her, and she alone neither affords to the enemy who comes against her cause for irritation at the character of the foe by whom he is defeated, hmm. nor to his subject cause for complaint that his masters are unworthy. 
Many are the proofs which we have given of our power, and assuredly it does not lack witnesses, and therefore we shall be the wonder not only of the men of today, but of after times. We shall need no Homer to sing our praise, nor any other poet whose verses may perhaps delight for the moment, but whose presentation of the facts will be discredited by the truth. Nay, we have compelled every sea and every land to grant access to our daring, and have everywhere planted everlasting memorials, both of evil to foes and of good to friends. Such then is the city for, who, for which these men nobly fought and died, deeming it their duty not to let her be taken from them. And it is fitting that every man who is left behind should suffer willingly for her sake. Huh? What are you doing? What do we got? Got last time? Both should be done. Right? Oh. And it is fitting. The school of The school of Howard, my brother. A painting in mind. <laughs> Alright, can you read the last sentence? Mm -hmm. Such then is the city for which these men nobly fought and died deeming it their duty not to let her be taken from them. And it is fitting that every man who is left behind should suffer willingly for her sake. Mm. Okay. So, uh, the training turns out to be the matter of life. The matter of life is the school of Hellas. The school of Hellas comes back to be the political institution. And that's... Uh, Sure. And for that, everyone who's left behind, that the people who remain mm -hmm. should suffer willingly. That's a bit of an exhortation to the audience. Yeah. Yeah, I would think so. They're the ones left behind. Yeah. Suffer willingly. <laughs> That's right. You got to suffer. These guys have died, and you guys. At least you can do a suffering. Yeah. Okay. Hmm? So it, it, it's, uh, it's the defense of the city. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or the whole system. Of the system. Okay. But for that. Right. The whole school. You can find this even today by people who live in Garden Grove like that. Yeah. I haven't known any. Oh. I think they are for this. Honey and beef, then. I think there's some people for this country who would do the same. No, that has that spur. Therefore, his conclusion. Charge. It is for this reason that I have dwelt upon the greatness of our city. Right, for that. For I decided to show you that we are contending for a higher prize than those who do not enjoy such privileges in like degree, and at the same time to let the praise of these men, in whose honor I am now speaking, be made manifest by proofs. Indeed, the greatest part of their praise has already been spoken, for when I lauded the city, that was that the praise wherewith the brave deeds of these men and men like them have already adorned her. And there are not many Hellenes whose fame would be found, like theirs, evenly balanced with their deeds. Hmm. And it seems to me that such a death as these men died gives proof enough of manly courage, whether as first revealing it or as affording its final confirmation. And even in the case of those who in other ways fell short of goodness, it is the right that the valor with which they fought for their country should be set before all else. For they have blotted out evil with good, and have bestowed a greater benefit by their service to the state than they have done harm by their private lives. And no one of these men either so set his heart upon the continued enjoyment of wealth as to become a coward, or put off the dreadful day yielding to the hope which poverty inspires, that if he could but escape, it might yet become, escape it, he might yet become rich. But deeming the punishment of the foe to be more 
desirable than these things. And at the same time, regarding such a hazard as the most glorious of all, they chose accepting the hazard to be avenged upon the enemy and to relinquish these other things, trusting to hope the still obscure possibilities of success. But in action, as to the end, as to the issue that was before their eyes, confidently relying upon themselves. You know, isn't it nice to live in an age when we don't have to do this anymore? People don't want to go to war. Mm -hmm. right. We've progressed so far. We've progressed so far from this. Yeah, we don't ever do this anymore. We stay at home and push buttons. Mm -hmm. Fight for the state. Fight and die without leaving home. Okay. We send aid. And somebody else does. Okay, let's do the meditation of the paraphrase, shall we? Okay? okay? Yeah. This is called, very often that they, they copy this and paste them on, glue them on the bathroom walls and honey and beef. Must be in the girl bathroom. Yeah. Is that where the meditation hall is? Yeah, there's some meditation. Are you good for another one? Now it gets, now it soars, go ahead, come on. And so these men then bore themselves after a manner that this is our city. But you who survive, though you may pray These are the survivors. Though you may pray that it be with less hazard, should resolve that you will have a spirit to meet the foe, which is no whit less courageous. And you must, and you must estimate the advantage of such a spirit not alone by a speaker's words, for he could make a long story in telling you what you yourselves know as well as he, all the advantages that would be gained by warding off the foe. How are you going to do it? Nay, rather you must daily fix your gaze upon the power of Athens and become lovers of her. And when the vision of her greatness has inspired you, reflect that all this has been acquired by men of courage who knew their duty and in the hour of conflict were moved by a high sense of honor, who if ever they failed in any enterprise, were resolved that at least their country should not find herself deserted by their valor, but freely sacrificed to her the fairest offering it was in their power to give. For they gave their lives for the common weal, and in so doing one for themselves the praise which grows not old and the most distinguished of for they gave their lives for the common will, and in so doing one for themselves the praise which grows not old, and the most distinguished of all sepulchres, not that in which they lie buried, but that in which their glory survives in everlasting remembrance, celebrated on every occasion which gives rise to word of eulogy or date of emulation. For the whole world is the sepulchre of famous men, 
and it is not the epitaph upon monuments set up in their own land that alone commemorates them, but also in lands not their own. There abides in each breast an unwritten memorial of them, planted in the heart rather than graven on stone. Do you, therefore, now make these men your example, in judging freedom to be happiness and courage to be freedom? Be not too anxious about the dangers of war, for it is not those that are in evil plight who have the best excuse for being unsparing of their lives, for they know they have no hope of better days, but rather those who run the risk, if they continue to live, of the opposite reversal of fortune, and those to whom it makes the greatest difference if they suffer a disaster. For to a manly spirit more bitter is humiliation associated with cowardice than death when it comes unperceived in close company with stalwart deeds and public hopes. Go on. How are you going to do it? You're going to picture mine up on the Athens, picture mm -hmm. gaze up on the Tower of Athens, and come over to her, so you're inspired by her vision. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sense it, please. Bring it back up on Mm -hmm. We're going to sing America the Beautiful a lot. It's kind of an analogous structure, doesn't it, to the way courage functions in the Republic? He won't admit a certain lie into the state. God is good in reality, immutable, cause of truth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's parallel well, here? Well, I'm just saying that courage there is holding that. In and freedom. In the face of everything. Yeah, yeah. Right. And yeah, these so guys fixing in their mind the glory of Africa. Right? Yeah, yeah, holding yeah. that in the yeah. face of everything. So it just struck me as a parallel function for spirit. He's also calling courage freedom, isn't he? Yeah. Just a window. You, you could you could pull it. Uh, it's a frame. Pericles is reality. Is Athens? Yeah. Right. I follow that. Boy, I tell you, he's a democratic man. Isn't he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> How about parents? Shall we go for parents? Sons and brothers and widows? The women at the end. Sons and widows. I think I'll pass on to someone else because okay. I'm losing do, my do, voice. Do, do, do. Want to do it? Sure. Wherefore, I do not commiserate the parents of these men, as many of you as are present here, but will rather try to comfort them. For they know that their life has been passed amid manifold vicissitudes, and it is to be accounted good fortune when men win, even as he's now a most glorious death, and you a life grief. And when life has been meted, out to them to be happy in no less than to die in. And the life, the life is netted out to them to be happy in no less than to die. Oh. It will be difficult, I know, to persuade you of the death of it, of the truth of it. It will be difficult. I know to persuade you of the truth of this, when you will constantly be reminded of your loss by seeing others in the enjoyment of blessings, in which you too once took delight. And grief, I know, is felt not for the want of the good things which a man has never known, but for what is taken away from him after he has once become accustomed to it. But those of you who are still of an age to have offspring, 
to bear up in the hope of our, hope of our children, other children. Of the, other children. Yeah. For not only too many of you individually will the children, but those of you who are still of an age to have offspring should bear up in the hope of other children. For not only too many of you individually will the children that are born hereafter be a cause of forgetfulness of those who are gone, but the state also will reap a double advantage. It will not be left desolate, and it will be secure. Mm -hmm. It's the reverse. Mm -hmm. We take care of the city. Yeah. And the city taken care yeah. of. For they cannot possibly offer fair and impartial counsel, who, having no children to hazard, do not have an equal part in the risk. But as for you, who have passed your prime, count as gain the greater portion of your life during which you were fortunate, and remember that the remainder will be short. What's your saying? Nice. You're glad you're old, you're going to die. Glad you're, you're glad you're old. You've already had some good. Uh, That's right. And your loved one's gone, so you won't be around much longer. So thank God for that. <laughs> and be comforted by the fair fame of being your son. For the love of honor alone is untouched by age. And when one comes to the ineffectual period of life, it is not gain, as some say, that gives the greater satisfaction, but honor. We got it. Factual. We already got it. We don't have to give anything to you. You've got it. In other words, when you get over, what, 65, you're ineffectual, or what? Well, whenever that is when you've passed your prime, you cleverly didn't put a number on it. Yeah. Thank goodness. Because <laughs> he's probably over it. <laughs> Turn him into soil and grain. Right? I, knew, I knew a couple of people in my neighborhood who reached that just around at 17. <laughs> <laughs> they reversed the number to 71. From then on, they were a complete liability. On that <laughs> point on, they were down all the way. We take care of the st they take care of the state here. Of the it's like I remember the immortal lines of my mother. I came out of the service. Um, if you don't mind a recollection, it was funny as hell. I, I, I had the, the uh, unusual military record of being the only person I knew of who came out of the service as a private. And, uh, After being? Well, I had a couple of jumps up and down, but I came out that way. And I came through the door, my mother's opening words to me, I came through the door. And she looked at my uniform and had a couple of ribbons here and told her. She said, you know, you'll never look better than you do now. <laughs> You're over. That's no it. stripes. <laughs> That's it. That's it, right? From here on, <laughs> it's down. <laughs> That's it. You have reached the pinnacle. I figured. Well, it's pretty, pretty fun that, wasn't she? Perceptive. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well cash in your chips. <laughs> a little clumsy in her compliments, I think. Clumsy eater compliment. <laughs> that was, that's called the you know the opening greeting as you come through the door. That was the put you in your place comment. That, that was. Yeah. Do you think you're going to do something after this? You looked at that yeah. yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you look great. I mean, that's just an awkward way of saying. It. I do. Okay, thank you. I'll take that. I'll take that. Right? I really uh, think that. Yeah. True meaning of the expression. <laughs> No, I, it's I a meaning right. you have to separate from the person, though. Right? Meaning you, you cannot separate from the person. Is that what you're well, people don't mean some words that they say in, in the way some that they come exactly out meaning. Some people mean exactly what they say. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want you to guess their meaning. Mm. You never will look there. Yeah. But I'll take that as a better. Right. Go ahead. Give them benefit of the doubt. Yeah, I'll give them the benefit yeah. Certainly a fact when you talk about it. That will tell you. No. <laughs> Not even okay, that. charge. <laughs> for a fact, you're going to sweat much. I love you, But for such a few years. <laughs> <laughs> God, but for such a few present. But for such of you here present, present as days. our sons and brothers of these men, I see the greatness of the conflict that awaits you. For the dead are always praised. And even were you to attain to surpassing virtues, 
party. I love this one. I love that one. Want to do it again? It's my favorite third place one. But for such of you here present as our sons and brothers of these men, I see the greatness of the conflict that awaits you. Hey, you guys got a conflict. <laughs> right? Your sons and brothers? Brother. Your brother died, right? Your brother died. Right? Or the father. You gotta live up to them, huh? No, you scramble. Yeah. No, it's worse. Go ahead. For the dead are always saved. And even were you to attain to the passion virtues, oh, hardly mm -hmm. would you be judged. <laughs> So you know what the moral of this story is, don't yeah. you? Yeah, you're not yeah. very equal. Yeah, get, you, get yourself. You have to finish. Oh, you have to finish. Oh. Yes, you get. No, no, you have to. I will not say they're equal, but even a little inferior. Right. Yeah. Can't make it while you're alive. No, no, no. no, no. This is the idea that if you reach surpassing virtue, even were you to attain to surpassing virtue, Hardly would you be judged to be better than those who have died in the field of battle. Right. Right. You are right. considered yeah. inferior. That's right. Those even, who have even though yeah. they might have lived right. a really terrible life. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. The dirty dozen. No matter what you do in your life. Yeah. The only good is the dead. Right. The what? That's the, the only good. That's right. That's the, the only one. There's no way you can. That's the highest virtue in the study. Mm -hmm. the the study. Now, if you only had a brother here that died in the war, then your mom could have said, now if you'd really, if you'd really done well, you would have died more. Why you? did you come back? <laughs> really? <laughs> now look, you brought the shame on us all. We can never live this down. <laughs> the ladies next door, son, died. Well, <laughs> Here comes the widows. Okay, come on, the line for the widows. Oh, the widows. But there is envy of the living on account of rivalry. But that which has been removed from our path is honored with a good will that knows no antagonist. If I am to speak also of womanly virtue, referring to those of you who will henceforth be in widowhood, I will, I will like crying. <laughs> <I will. Really? laughs> Go ahead. Come on. Shed a tear. Sum up all in a brief admonition. Admonition. Great is your glory if you fall not below the standard which nature has set for your step. And great also is hers of whom there is least talk among men, whether in praise, praise or, or in blame. blame. <laughs> Woo! What is, what is this thing? Go ahead, Barbara. You can do it yeah. since you said ouch. Well, it sounds like the standard for the, for the sex is that you shouldn't have any excellence whatsoever. Because if you were to attain excellence, then you would be praised. And the, his idea of the ideal would be that you don't Either one. get any Either praise one. or any blame. Or blame. Stay away from praise Live, or blame. Mm -hmm. Live the mediocre life. The mediocre life is the ideal for your sex. Great, great is your glory if you fall not below the standard which nature has set for you. Not us. Yeah, it's nature. Nature's done. It's a little different than the public. Ah! You can't the wrong life. <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay. Yeah. 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 Right. You blame. can't yeah, say you're safe. Yeah, so you cannot succeed. Is, now he wraps cannot, it up. You can't, can't fail either. You can't do anything good. You're right. Nothing. Yeah, you leave your house behind your black shroud. Right. <laughs> like the Iranian I have now spoken in obedience to the law. Such words as I had that. Such words as I had that were fitting and those whom we are bearing have already in part also received their tribute in our deeds. Besides, the state will henceforth maintain their children at the public expense until they grow to manhood, thus offering both to the dead and to their survivors a crown of substantial worth as their prize in such contests. For where the prize is offered for virtue greatest, there are found the best citizens. Pardon? Rush to your death. Mm -hmm. And now, when you have made due lament, each for his own dead, depart. That's right.
Okay. Now, how are you going to do it? functions with respect to its people as well as how the people within it function and, and giving a description. Each one gives that kind of description. Each speech. So comparing the similarities and differences given that with mm -hmm. reference to the city or what how Athens functions. Well, we can, you know, we have to face this judgment. Um, whoever, whoever the author was, I suppose they were, whoever they were. They did take the fragments of the one, didn't they? Put it in the form. There's children and survivors <coughs> and parents. Like Semperanius. There's say. Similar topics, anyway. Mm -hmm. There's something that bothers me about Socrates' speech is that these characters are saying they'll find inspiration in the city and and have the strength within yourself to you know to achieve something for the city. But Socrates is saying you know have this kind of dependence on the city in a way that the city will take care of you. No, he's not you know telling the citizens that you know, find room themselves the strength for the virtue of the Levine to Actually, is the word could in your translation, as it is in ours? Where? I was going to ask about that. I, I didn't uh, uh, <coughs> You have reference to uh, in ours. It's three thirty-one. Is there a step of that number there? Yeah, close to good. They meant just sections, is right? Is that the way you look at it? Yeah, just sections. What? Are they chapters? Oh, they are not the Yeah, that's for the intercities. Paragraphs? Right, paragraphs. 41. In a word, then, I say that our city as a whole is the school of Hellas. That it seems to me each individual among us could his own person the utmost grace and versatility prove himself self-sufficient in the most varied forms of activity it's a could could, it could. potential no, but it, your point that is I think you're making the difference in the two cities, were you not? Yeah, well, I was... One was more self-sufficient. It looked like Heracles, as you saw, it was more self-sufficient. Or well, urging more self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I was Yeah, could you direct us to... What were you going over before about... 
there was Pericles' speech about how that the people could be independent, not necessarily were. They had that opportunity. Yeah, they had the opportunity to develop. The yeah. But I don't know what I, I don't know. Like I think that's a very important point. Let's, let's go back to the force of your point. Could you do it on the point? Well, here at the end, he's talking about how he, he and the city, you know, will, will nourish the citizens and, and watch over the parents and the children. And, well, nurse. the children, of course, you know, they have to educate and direct, but um, it, it seems like he's giving, um, preaching this dependency on the city, this Passivity, where Pericles, you know, he's uh, inspiring them to act for the greatness of the city. Not, you know, where he takes that too far into the patriotic extreme, but still, it seems to be something in Pericles' speech about uh, inspiring people to act on their own that's lacking in that. Well, just, you know, I, I don't recall the rest of the dialogue, but from what we read at the end in, in the next week. Yeah, you know, it's uh, certainly there's a difference in the way in which they express support to the children. They're going to get, it's also going to be a way of getting public support. It's going to be done in such a way they won't even recognize in one sense that they're orphans. Well, that the state is going to be, is going to be the, the uh, surrogate parent on such a level. No, so for, for the, the children it's understandable that, you know, they need that support at that moment, but for, uh, the parents who are not very old, some and the, you know, some of the you know, adult citizens. It's the highest part of the state, too, isn't it? And I think that you'd have to conclude before a person could be excellent, they wouldn't know how to be that way. And maybe they don't know how to be that way. They would need that kind of support, you know, that kind of instruction or help. Well, it, it seems to be kind of um, a, a little bit, well, I know, just from Socrates, you know, that idea that you can't teach virtue, you know, you don't, you don't listen to, you don't give up yourself, your soul, you don't open up your soul to, uh, to the, the, uh, the sophist, you need to be careful, you don't, you don't trust anyone who comes along who's going to direct you, you know. but, uh, it's more of a you know, self-activating process. You, know, that you need the, the help of the wise people. But that that doesn't seem em as emphasized here. You know, he's, or as I said, he's like preaching this dependency on the state. And who's who's to say that this, you know, certainly Athens then wasn't you know, the just state? Well, this is not this is not the perfect republic. Well, I think that if we just take that issue of children in the nextness, the children are being brought up in such a way that the culminating act is when they gain their their armor supplied by the state. It's initiation so that the child then can take his place in, his, in the very ranks of his fathers. It's raised to the level of initiation. It's, it's not initiation into philosophy. No, it's initiation into warrior class. And that's into a guardian, guardian class. But you were kind of saying that all, all this last paragraph here was very Socratic, or at least saying of it was very Socratic, and I don't really see it. In what part? What part? You were talking about how, yeah, and in their name, I just see through the children to initiate your qualities and your parents to be good, to be of good cheer about yourselves, for we will nourish your age and take care of you both publicly and privately, privately in any place in which one of us may meet one of you who are the parents of the dead. You, you're saying that, you know, echo back to the apology. Well, read it again and tell me what he would be doing if he were doing it. Read it again. Visualize it and tell me what he'd be doing. And in your name I beseech you, the children, to imitate your fathers and you and you, parents, be of good cheer about yourselves, for we will nourish your age and take care of you both 
publicly and privately in any place in which one of us may meet one of you who are the parents of the dead. So what will he be doing? Meeting you. Yeah. So taking care of him. Nurturing? There's, a, there's obviously a difference in, in the two translations because there's an emphasis in the one that we have on himself. Yeah. I don't see it. I, th I see that's missing in that. So therefore, there's probably a problem in the Greek. Well, the first sentence before it, which I, this says I will. Yeah, I do deliver with the utmost seriousness. Yeah, do it again. Well, the sentence before. It, yeah. yeah. This, O ye children and parents of the dead, is the message which they bid us deliver to you, and which I do deliver with the utmost seriousness. And in their name I beseech you, the children... Okay. and in their name... I beseech you. I beseech you. That's, that's his, his action now. Go ahead. I beseech you, the children, to imitate your father, right. your fathers, and you, parents, to be of good cheer about yourselves, but we will nourish your age and take care of you both publicly and privately in any place in which one of us may meet one of you or parents of the dead. Yeah. The question is whether that description that also describes the way in which Socrates functioned. Well, when and you I, said one of us, who is that? Is, is the speaker representing the state? That was the very point that we, we were looking at before. Question is to what extent can you read into that, or is it there? Yeah. Something that Socrates personally would be doing, and in well, like measure, urging others to play a role similar to his own. In the uh, in the tradition, though, of these speeches, I don't know anything about that. Oh, Just yeah. stay there in that sentence. Mm -hmm. Does it look like he's saying something about himself and people like himself playing a role, and if they were doing that, would that be something? similar that we would have recognized in any of the dialogues. Especially the apology and the symposium. Possibly initiated Well, that he goes around and he takes care of the mother. That's his job, that's his post. But is he the only one? Or he says that God has posted in him. No, he's not the only one in the symposium. There are many people who are doing what he's doing. He right. his very words, very much like a Marcia. With the attainment. So then the next sentence is, and the care of you which the city shows, you know yourselves, but she has your provision by the law to turn the parents of children to those who die in the war. So, so the, way I would, the way I would take it, all right, would be to do this. I'd say this would be a great line for someone who wants to play the the, uh, the game of plunging, plum, plummeting the depths. Right? Like we have, we have this translation, we have this translation. Right? Let's call this the logo. And yours is Edith Hamilton, right? We're now raising a question of to what extent we can find in here let's call it a, a role for Sock on the model of the Apology, Gallus Symposium, etc. Right? Okay. I think the way to play it would be to say, okay, therefore this section, which is so compact, mm -hmm. would have to be examined with the utmost care in terms in terms of the Greek, to mm -hmm. see how much you can pull out of it, to see if it's there. This would be the real task for a translator, mm -hmm. interested in seeing whether or not All the there is more there, or uh, but we can pull out more there, and this would be the fun in translate. Well, interestingly enough, that's the opening passage from these people. <laughs> he says this is, they doubt, well, they, there are doubts about Socrates, I'll play the light in this and they don't see them. Yeah, like I don't. Yeah, I know. I, I disregard that. Right. Because this is why it'd be fun. Yeah. Because the whole the whole position that I think that uh, we're looking at right now depends upon how much you can find in these translations. And whenever you get to that kind of a problem, the principle would be you're going on a translation. 
since it doesn't permeate the text and you can't find the same point in a variety of ways throughout it, you're left with one or two sentences, therefore, you better stop and say, hey, hey, there goes Sarah. Hey, Sarah, Barbara, David, David, come over here. What? Well, is this much see, see how much you can get out of it since you only have a small But so is it much clearer in the Greek? Well, that's easy. <laughs> we give it to them and say, let's see if they can make whatever is latent here that can that can be said through the Greek, and let's see what comes out of it. That's a challenge. That's the way I think A lot of things they've left out or put in before. Yeah. Since we already can see a different in emphasis between the two, can we? Like yours obscures the role much more. In other words, this point can be better made in the lobe than the penalty. Would you agree as you compare the two? Could I hear that those two sentences? Yeah, yeah, let me read it. Such is the message, O oh, you children and parents of the farm, which they enjoyed upon us to deliver, and which I, with all the earnestness in my power, have now delivered. And I myself, on their behalf, entreat the children to imitate their fathers, and the parents to have no fear for themselves, seeing that we, both privately and publicly will give nurture to your age and bestow care upon you wherever soever one of us meets with one of you. I, mean, no, on their I, behalf, I think you can go further with yeah. the load. No, on, the, so on their behalf. Yeah. So is the Socrates just, you know, you know, he believes he's you know, playing the role of you know, the political man in you know, the state. So he just claim that responsibility. Who? Well, like in the apology, no. a lot of dialogues, he talks about how going around and trying to yeah. bring just, um, make people. more just people. He's a mm -hmm. true political man. So is he claiming like political power? Right there. Yeah, right there. But, and what about the paragraph before he says, this is all that we have to say to our families and to the state. We would say, take care of our parents and of our sons. Let her worthily, let her worthily cherish the old age of our parents and bring up our sons in the right way. But we know that she will, of her own accord, take care of them and does not need any education of ours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that clear that the state is playing? Yeah, I think the state is playing well. The, question, the only question we have at this point is, I think there are two points. One is, yeah. is this where Socrates enters in? And is the role of the state different in the two? Yeah, what is, not, care, two points. Yeah, what is care and nurture in this side? Is it dependent causing? Or, like you said, he would try to ally their fears. In other words, uh, what does he mean by care and nurturing? I think that's an important point there, whether or not this, the state is bringing about a dependency, I think which was, was your point, wasn't it? Yeah. Not, not, but it was just... Yeah. On the side of the state, the question was dependent. Yeah, so uh, so whether or not that, de what they mean there is that, that the state has an obligation to bring about care and nurture, and what is the definition of that care and nurture? What What is it? You know, is it what we might mean as a security check? Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, free housing, uh, or is it, or is it sitting and talking with someone and lying their fears about death or about the future or or having discussions? Or is that what you mean by nurture? I think that that question of nurture and care has to be, in my mind at least, defined before I could, you know, 
go along with that idea of the of dependency, the state causing dependency in one in one case versus the other case of Pericles, uh, you know, asking the people to so-called pull yourself up by your own bootstrap. Uh -huh. I'll tell you the problem I have is because I read the Republic so strongly that it's a um, it's a challenge for people to really take control of their lives. And, I'm, and that people, you know, just society have to start with people becoming more just. Oh, not you know, not the state. You know, not well, how that. do you do that? Who has so it? that's what seems strange that the state, you know, seems to be emphasized so much. Well, it's the highest part of the state here. I think is what the point was. He said the highest part of the state, as well as himself, right? not the whole state. No, highest part of the state, which is him, <laughs> or the. No, the, the the wisest, uh, yeah. at least the most, the ones with the most reason. I think that's the uh, that's why I put it. If you function as or within this section, would there would there be room to be Socratic? That's, mm -hmm. If so, then. But clearly, would you agree? Uh, one difference between the two speeches is that Pericles doesn't take on a personal role. Where again, in this section, there's a personal role for Socrates. And for people like himself. I mean, that's a basic difference between the two speeches. And that is the, going back to, I forget who was sitting there that raised that point earlier. Barbara. Barbara, that's right. So is he kind of that's the, yeah, which is the, What's the role of this last section, which appeared to be extemporaneous? So, somehow disguising institution, or disguising what the role he, um, he considers that has to be played by the, the philosophers. Yeah, and isn't that typical? Yeah, isn't that typical in other words? Yeah. 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 I get getting confused once again by like, some kind of Yeah. Well, when you have to dig it out. Yeah. Did someone say coffee or not? Yeah, you were 35 minutes. Old. Oh, oh God. God. I'll never forget.